Yo, what up guys? It is Gnomes. I'm here in a game between Tiny Dragon and Shrine Master. Tiny Dragon obviously on the top hand side and Shrine Master on the bottom hand side. I say top and bottom even though it's more so left and right. Um, just because I saw him come from the top. But I guess so left hand side we have Tiny. Or yeah, Tiny and right hand side we have Shrine Master. Oh, we see the... Um, this is an interesting play. We see the... Um, gargantuan boulder that was thrown it was kind of um, preemptive reason being he does not want to be uh, metamorphosized unless he's just afraid of the doom or the taunt but I doubt it yeah ooh it gets it out before the um, Dr Fae dreamer gets out so no favor from that or sorry no counsel that's what I meant no counselor from that um, we do have the dream state up now which gives detection obviously heals up for some of it so only seven damage dealt now um, that, I don't know why he, <laughs> in retrospect, I don't actually know why he did do the throw gargantuan boulder, because that cost him 40 Nora, and it dealt an okay amount of damage, but, hmm. I'm guessing, like I said, I think he was afraid of the metamorphosis, but in retrospect, even if he was metamorphosized, there's nothing here to deal damage to him. So I don't know why he did. <laughs> Wait, why did he do that? In retrospect, I don't know. It might have just been like, you know, that could have been one of those plays where you just do it to confuse your enemy. Because he plays, he played the extractor. He's like, okay, the reason he might have done that is to say, you know, back off. You can't engage. You're now kind of low. You're at 34 health. And you're scared, right? He just wants to kind of mess with his enemy. Going here would be okay, because he'd just bounce this way. Wait, one, two, three, four. No, it goes into lava either way, so never mind. But, um, yeah, so maybe he just did that just to be like, hey, I want you to be scared just so that I can, you know, get Nora with my extractor. All right, there's the mangled totem. Can he kill that in one turn? Not that I can see. Seven, ten. No, it's not in range, is he? Four, one, two, three, three, attack. Four, one, two. I mean, he could attack it with his dreamer if he wanted to. This is meta SP, by the way. It's a very. This is an insanely strong battle group. Insanely strong. This is the one of. This is one of the best battle groups in the game, if not the best. I. I mean, played by me, it'd be the best. And with that, I don't. <laughs> okay, that that didn't come out. That didn't come correctly. What I mean is, like, this would be if I were to play my best battle group that I could play. It would be this battle group right here. I mean, I'd have to get into it. Like, I'd have to learn it a bit. I mean, it wouldn't take very long. But this is just the most efficient, strong thing that SP has. And SP by itself is probably the second strongest faction. Oh yeah, I had actually somebody watching my videos. I forgot who it was. Somebody was watching my videos and they asked um, what I think the strongest factions are. Um, I think that it is very close top three between KF, ST, and SP. Those are quite those are those three are all up there. I personally think SP is the best, but um, other people would say that uh, ST is or KF. But I think played at its peak potential, like if Tiny Dragon was playing. Every faction at his peak versus the best. Like, if Tiny Dragon was playing Tiny Dragon when Tiny Dragon was the best, I think SP wins. Um, yeah. But then, it's close, though. So, it's either SP, ST, or KF. Um, and then, it would be SL under that. And then, after that, the ones that would be, like... See, I said three. I said S P S T K F at the top, then S L in the middle, and then the bottom three are F S F W and U D. That's seven. That's just seven. Am I missing one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm missing one. What did I forget? <laughs> I played this game so long. I don't even know all the factions. Is that Oh, IS, true. I think IS is also actually up there. Um, I think IS is right next to SL. So it would be, um, the top fashion for me would be SP, but others would say ST most likely. I think most people would say ST. So let's go ST first, SP second, KF third, um, SL fourth, then IS, then FS, FW, and UD all kind of the same. 
the, that's how I would put the ranking. Um, but obviously every battle group, like if you have Taylor playing, for example, he'll just wreck everybody. Or if you have Carmivore playing with KF or Taylor playing with uh, FS. But like every battle group has a tier zero battle group. I'm pretty sure every theme or every faction has a tier battle group, tier zero battle group, or something very close to it at least. Like I think uh, it might be a bit harder for UD and and uh, FS to have tier zeros, but like I pretty uh, they, they have something very they have at least no matter no matter point zero two five they might not have tier zero but like point zero two five point zero five something like that. Like FS, I wouldn't know like a really, really strong FS battle group. I can't think of one right now. Like the best one that I can think of for FS, the best battle group would be uh, either Meta, Adaptive, or Psychic. But all three of those, or all three of those don't have like the scaling that some of the other factions do. Like, they have good points in the game, but not just, like, the pure just insanity that, like, SP has, for example. Like, look at this. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 versus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But we have three summons, and we have Norgen going. And look at the champion. 65 health. 65 health. This guy's huge. It's a 71 Nord champion with stun and flame burst. We have this guy that gains a AP because of soul vitality. So he gains, gains AP from these summons. He's at 63 health. This thing is getting, you know, 50 Nora a turn. And then we have, uh, you know, detection. We have a long range dot. We have this for like a, a really good nerf or a debuff, I mean. So we have just like this guy's a. Every single one of these champions are just insane. And really, because he has two fawns, all he should be doing is deploying. He should never be playing spells. Maybe equipment or relics, but never spells. Just because of all this uh, dream state. Alright, here's a pull. So he's going for a kill here on the Doombringer. 34 health on him. This should be a kill pretty easily, I'm pretty sure. He can also attack. Yeah, he can actually move back here for the um, Flame Burst. Yeah, go back here. Jump over here. Flame Burst. It's a kill. Or is he going to flame burst into range of him? I thought he just go like here, right? Actually, does he even need to? Let's see, flame burst. He goes one, two, three. He can hit. Right, there's the flame burst I was talking about. He survives right now. Oh, no, he doesn't. Or does he? Yeah, he survives at one health at the moment. Yeah, he survives with one health. Right? Because he regens two, so he's at four and minus three. If he had, because I was thinking about this play too, but all right, there you go. That's fine. Because he could have moved this Rift Spirit to this location or this location, because then the Houndgun and the Rift Lord can attack once, right? And then he might not have to deal so much damage to his Rift Spirit, but it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter too much. At least now they save AP, so that's okay. They're all in this font, which is a bit scary, but nice damage dealt. Also, the blockade stops the AP gain from the Soul Vitality, but he doesn't get this Nora Globe, so that's kind of big. We have another Metamorphosis over here. Double tap, or is he just going to Force Barrier? All right. Hits the Rift Spirit once. He's attacking. The reason he's doing this, he doesn't want to be engaged when he gets this Nora Globe. That's why he does did that. He killed the Rift Spirit so that the Dreamer can run away now. And that was pretty fair, in all honesty, because it was an equipment, 40 Nora for the Harpoon, but Carmivore, uh, or sorry, sorry, not Carmivore, Tiny Dragon gets the Nora Globe. So, so far, it's kind of even still. But there we do have um, the Totem and this Rift Spear here still. Right? Force Spear? Force Spear stops the uh, Houndgun from moving forward too much. And now the Fate Oracle can just stay here. He's pretty safe. Right? Yeah. He can't be attacked by the Houndgun or anything. Though I'm not positive. Oh, did he put Tough on him? Yeah, okay. So we have Tough on the Oracle as well. So not only does he have... I mean, he only has 34 health, but... Out of range of this. Yeah. Can move up three. 
or maybe attack the Rift Spirit ones. There's a deploy. Both in range of the Dream State. Who's the buffer on? It's on him, isn't it? Uh, okay, it's not too good. He he got the buffer from the Dream State, or sorry, from the Gift Future Site on the uh, Tender. He might have. He would have rather had that on the Oracle. I'm thinking. Yeah, this is the one attack that I was talking about. All right, let's see. So he got to kill the one turn, but this turn looks a bit awkward. The Flame Fist will bounce away if he moves here. So what he could do is go here, leap behind the Doombringer, and get bounced into the enemy font. That's what I would do. How much health is he at? 49. Yeah, go here, jump right here, get bounced this way, and then just run down here. That's a good play, I think. And then if you're, but thing is, if you're not bounced, like if, if Tiny Dragon saw that play coming and did not bounce the Flame Fist, then the Flame Fist is just stuck, right? Even though he can just, all right, there's the shrink. The shrunken, the shrinking. Oh no, there's a misplay. This is the kind of misplay that Tiny, Tiny Dragon's waiting for. So he used the Avalanche, which is 45 Nora. Why would you leap this way? He's playing so defensively. He uses 45 Nora to deal almost no damage to the Oracle because of the tough. He causes the Council spells to go off. And they all gain the damage as well from the Spell Swallower. So he just gave all of them one damage. He gave 5, H, uh, five Nora over. And he, now all spells will cost 5 Nora more as well. So he gave 5 Nora to Tiny. The Council spells mean opposing costs 5 Nora as well. And, and that was just a bad spell. So he wasted a turn there with playing 45 Nora. I think he should still be able to bring it back, but that was a bad play. Is he in heal mass range? He is. He should run away with the Oracle as far as possible. The um, pull is still on a three turn cooldown, or a one, at least a two turn cooldown, I mean. But if he's, he can't, he can get into the font with the Doombringer if he wants, but I'm not sure if it's worth it. I think, like I said, it might have been a better idea to move the Flame Fist here, get bounced into there, or just stay there and maybe stun or attack next turn. Even though it's hard to say because it's a double tap, double tap. Ah, okay, maybe you don't bounce. Just because if you're afraid of the bounce not being up. But he should have definitely just not played the spell. Like I said, he's playing against a, a battle group with dream state so you don't want to be playing spells especially as sp sp by itself just doesn't want to play spells either right so he should definitely not be playing spells he should be deploying only deploying he wants like 12 chambers on the board and then he can't lose right he just can't lose at that point because spells you do when you want tempo he doesn't need tempo here especially not on a turn like that he messed up because he uh spell resistance Looks like spell resistance. Weakened spells, yeah. From whom? Oh, he had the weakened spells. So yeah, he... Dude, what the heck? He's supposed to be rank 3. And he avalanches a champion with weakened spells and tough 3. And the other one with a buffer. His avalanche for 45 Nora. No, 60 Nora. No, 50 Nora. His spell for 50 Nora. Dealt in all... 8 damage, and it dealt damage to his own Mangled Totem. You guys, this is why I say, like, think your turns through before you click for no reason. And you're like, just think. Like, okay, I want to use Avalanche. Now check, why is it a good idea? Why is it a bad idea? Okay, there's the Mangled Totem. Man, Mangled Totem going off. Been, so we have this one, but it's not going to hit anything. And this one will hit both of these. So he's going to take 8 damage, and he'll take 2. But this Houngen is in danger now. It's quite close. Ritual is a good idea. Ritualist is good, even though he's not playing Council. But Ritual is still good against this wolf, right? So We do have double Extractor out now as well. My guess from Tiny Dragon this turn will be a kill on the Houngen. Because we have 
Uh, swap, swap into pull. So swap into pull kills the Houndgen. Um, he kills the Mangled Totem. He gets the Norglobe and he deploys bot. See a pounce here? Should. So yeah, swap, pull, kill, kill, deploy bot, and move him bot for defense as well. And then because of that move, yeah, because of this play that he's about to do, Tiny Dragon's not gonna know what to do, or Shrine Master's not gonna know what to do, and he's going to um, retreat. So kill, kill, deploy, Shr Shrine Master retreats. All right, this is Shatter. Shrine Master retreats. And then, uh, and then we see a long game start. There's the pounce. There's the deploy. He deployed first though. Oh, cause he's gonna use the battle hen. There's the deploy bot I was talking about. Here's the kill on this and the kill on this. He's gonna actually gonna be in the font. And then the retreat by Shrine Master. It's like. Dude, I am, I swear, I'm a fucking, you can see it coming. One hit. Got that Nora globe. He has tough three on the strategist. So the strategist is just gonna move in. So now he's contesting middle fawn again. Here's the one tap. He's gonna go down to help, like I said. The only thing I didn't say though, is that the battle hymn was gonna be used. That's the one thing I forgot to say. And then this totem is dead. There we go. He's not on the font. I thought he was gonna move in the font, maybe. No, he just puts, he put the uh, tough on him, but he didn't move in the font. He decides to retreat instead. He's afraid of the double tap, maybe. That's fine. Now he retreats. He could maybe stun. He could leap, stun, move into the font. I think he has just about enough AP. Let's say three, four, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Yeah, he has just enough enough AP to stun the harbinger and move into the font, if he wants. It's not a bad play to do that. But then once the Harbinger is not stunned anymore, then uh, then what, right? Deployed the HP gen, yeah. Leap, stun, and then move three. He should have been back one. Oh, he's gonna possess. Oh, okay. So instead of doing the stun and moving in, he possesses and moves in with the enemy Harbinger. So what's gonna come from Tiny? Tiny's gonna move down with his Bard. He's gonna charm. So move here, charm his own unit, move into the font for contest. Um, and then kill something. Maybe kill the head shrinker. Was this a misclick? Why do you move here with the head shrinker? So yeah, move here, charm, move into the font because the the flame piss is paralyzed anyway. So I just charm the harbinger and move in. Move here, charm, move in, and maybe kill the head shrinker. Even though I don't think so. He already used the pull so. But he can start attacking the Hydranker. He can also move into this Fawn. There's not as much danger here anymore. Now that the Hydranker used all its AP, he can actually move in with his Strategist. He doesn't have to be afraid. There's not enough damage here. There's nine. I mean, he does have to be afraid of like knockback. There's the Charm. Move in. Like I said, Flame Fist can't do anything. Harbinger can't do anything. It'll just become uncharmed. And then the whole the whole possessed play is just useless now. I think a little bit ahead. 
And that's a tiny bit hard to see what's going to happen, but it's not really that hard. You see, what happens if I possess? Well, I can move into the font. Well, can he move into the font? Well, yeah, he has charm, so he obviously can. Like it was, it was like two two thoughts ahead, I guess, that he had to think. He's just positioning here. He's going to wait for next turn to do something. Maybe deploy here with the dream state. It is three fonts to one. Ooh, now we have the Nora link. So these extractors are now useless. And now we have Shatter here with the Vashal Ranger to uh, get rid of the sh um, Possess or the Slaver's Whip, I guess. But yeah, Regulator, nice. Regulator is a good champ by himself, too. Has Shatter plus Nora link. So like good abilities for like um, utility. Also has Hunter Walker, so he's actually kind of a tank as well. Like has good tank stats, four defense, seventy Nora. So yeah, now with the with the regulator, he's countering the extractor. The harbinger could attack the ranger twice. No, once. All right, there's the bounce. Bounce of the Rift Spirit, actually. Kind of interesting. All right, that's a nice play. Good deploy, at least. Good deploy on the Harbinger. Or on the War Drummer, sorry. I wonder why I didn't deploy the War Drummer here more, though. But I guess he didn't want him to get... Uh... No, it was actually a good position. Because uh, the reason he deploys down here is because he doesn't want to uh, become... Oh, that's funny. Uh, become confused and distracted, right, from the spell, from the uh, inhibit power. Anyway, so we see the shrink, and the, now he's actually, that's a good play. He shrunk, he moved the Harbinger forwards, and now he's going to surround the Harbinger, so he can't run away. I mean, I'm guessing we'll see, like, a Grimlix Bane, and that kills all three of these. Or no, it kills one of them, only this one. The charm will wear off, so he can't just run away for free, too. And the shrink, so he's only four. Um, but we do have swap up again, right? So the strategist could swap if he wants to. To get to get the harbinger safe. That just puts the strategist in danger though, you know? What? Was this a misclick? Why is he retreating so far with his rock shape? This is a 73 HP chant tank. You want him to take damage. Just leave him here. If he takes a hit, that's fine. There's the, yeah, there's that. That's what I was talking about. That means the dark healing is gone, so we can see exactly. Here's the full heal mass that went off because he confused the dark healing. Also, got rid of the, um, the, uh, ritualist as well as the rock shaper there, kind of. We well, didn't get rid of them, but like dealt with them well. All right, so we're maybe going to see a shatter. You can also just move in and attack. Yeah, I don't think he shatters here. Yeah, I just attack. There's no reason to shatter here because he's not going to get another possess off, and the drive doesn't really matter. So I think no, sh not shattering is a good good idea. All right, what's he do to save his harbinger? Does he use the swap? Or is he just going to kill things and that then run away? The Hedring is at 61 health because of the War Drummer with the... Um... Dude, why did he never deploy his War Banner? I feel like Tiny Dragon nerfs himself because he, he doesn't feel like playing War Banner. He could, but he's like, nah. He doesn't feel like it. Yeah, so here's the swap maybe. Exactly. So he swaps to save his Harbinger. And he put tough on the strategist, so he's kind of tanky here. Also 20 damage, wow. He's going to leap? Or, sorry, not leap, but... Alright, perfect kill. He used a spell there. A hidden spell. You saw how he, like, played the hidden spell in between his attacks to kind of try to hide it. You should attack this? Exactly. 
He moves up with his other champions. They're all in uh, magic resistance range, though. So it's like whatever. And this guy's at four defense with tough. We could still see a kill, though, even with the defense. Yeah, exactly, because of battle drum. And he gets the encouraged. So I think strategist is dead. Doombringer, I don't think is dead. But I think strategist is dead. Maybe the wolf. He's taking a lot of damage, that's for sure. But I don't think he's dead. Yeah, he's close. He has a double tap here, too, with 13 damage. He could get both kills. I was more so looking at the kill on the strategist. But yeah, this looks like a kill. Yeah, for sure. Nice. Kills the, kills the Doombringer. And he, look at this damage. 20 damage on the Rift Lord because of the Encouraged. So it was a nice little bait there, you know, by uh, by Shrine Master. He, like, baits in the... the, the look at that. All right, so he only kills one because of the escape magic, but this Nora Globe, is he going to go for it? He's at 73 health still. Though he doesn't have Calcify anymore. But nice double kill. I didn't think he would get both. I thought he would kill here and then uh, get the wolf or something. We still have a double tap from the Flame Fist as well. Double tap and leap away. And then also attack with the Rift Spirit once. He can drive. Or that. Can he get the kill? Oh my god. Can he? 15 with the drive? I don't think he needed to use that. Because he could have driven and then... Look, three kills this turn. Crazy. Yeah, nice. I think he could have also just driven, though. And he deploys. <laughs> That's crazy. Look at that play. He gets three kills, deploys off of that one uh, battle drum. Nicely done. We have 13 damage here. The, the Doomringer just died, so no more scaling from Adaptive. Though, the, the strategist is still here, right? So I guess it was two kills, not three. But still. Eight damage, yeah. So he can kill the Rift Spirit. With a Grimlix Bane, he can kill the Flame Fist. He could... Oh, did you ever go for the Rock Shaper here? Is it 11? One, two, three... Uh, kind of awkward what he wants to go for. He has four hits here is the thing. He's calculating. He either goes for the Infernal at 63 health, but evasive, or he goes for 73 health and two defense. It's kind of a hard choice. I think he kills the Flame Fist with a spell no matter what. But then the other kill, like maybe, the, it's hard to say which one he kills here. If Pounce is up, then he deployed. With that deploy, I don't know if he has the Nora now to kill the Flame Fist. Because he can't use a spell anymore. He has 10 damage. I mean, he has so many attacks here. I assume he has the kill. Let's see. 11, 11. He does 11, 11. Is he in Battlemaster? Yeah, he's in Battlemaster range. He has 19 health left. He can attack one more time for nine. Or no, eight, sorry. Yeah, eight. He has four seconds left. Running out of time. Nexus aura range. Yeah. He didn't even get one kill. He, he took too long. He did not move back with the bard to attack the rift spirit. So could we see a stun? Yeah, we could see a leap into a stun. He didn't move back with the uh, bard to attack the rift spirit. And he did not... Yeah, look at this. Boom. Stun. He takes then 12 damage from this Rift Spirit. Can he deploy Relic? He already deployed this Shrine thing. The only thing he could deploy is a Rock Trap. Um, and we do have the Nexus Aura up, though. So he can't really attack these three. Or these four, I mean. Yeah, attacking here is a bit nonsensical. Maybe go for this 26 health Fey Oracle. It's kind of low. No, he retreats. Okay. 
Man, it really sucks if he can't deploy down here, though. He wants to deploy here. So, Rock Shaper will be dead next turn, but the um, the Distract will be gone from these three. Or these two, I guess, are the important ones. You could also think of killing the... If he kills the Regulator, then he can start using Extract again, right? Attacks once, that does cause the shock, so might as well. Alright, we have him at 8 speed, 7 speed. Ooh, he moves in with the Arroyo Rift Lord. Also, do we have a rock trap here? It was also the question, right? We can see a mass teleport, though. Alright, so there's no... Yeah, we can still see a deploy here from Tiny Dragon. I wonder if he does that. Moves him too, moves him back, moves him back. Mass teleport down here and kill these two. And maybe do, look at this, 91 health on this Rift Lord. Yeah, dude, insane. No, okay, so he's gonna kill, let's see, 11. He's, no, he's not in range of, uh, he messed up. He's not in range of the um, battle leader from the hidden strategist. He messed this up. He now needs to attack again. Bad play. You can get the Norglobe and retreat three spaces. He should be waiting until the Battle Harden is gone. Oh, he does? Wait. Yeah, it's Battle Harden rank three, too. Yeah, he should be waiting for the Battle Harden to go away. He's going to do the mass, mass teleport now. Oh, do we have Pounce? But that's not enough for a kill. That's interesting. If he had gotten, all right, now he has tough three and hunter walker and two defense. So he's at, he's very tanky. But we could see a dispel, right? Dispel the tough if he wants. But yeah, if he had moved the strategist up and gotten the single hit kill with the harbinger, then he could have with the Oracle teleported bot and then the Oracle could help get this kill on the Flame Fist. But I think it's a kill anyway, right? Because we have Pounce and a basic attack. Pounce, basic attack. Yeah, this is still... A, okay, so it's still a kill. It's fine. Oh, Battlemaster is down here. Ah, okay, so the Strategist is down here, then. Alright, kill on the Rift Spirit. Yeah, Strategist is down here somewhere. We don't know where exactly. And there's a heal. Not bad. Heal will soften as well. Also, he, he's in range of the um, future site. Who got that Norglobe? Ability name. Source, ability name, 1387, and champion name, 1335. Yeah, look, he needs a Dispel first. Yo, Dispel. Dispel the tough, right? Why doesn't he Dispel the tough? Can you not Dispel? Or maybe he already used it or something? I don't know. I don't know why he's not dispelling this. It's it's reducing damage so much. And it's going to be there for two turns. You might as well... Because you're going to do it next turn, right? If you're not doing it this turn. So might as well do it this turn. So he didn't dispel there for some reason. Alright, nice. Quarry is out again. There's a lot of range champions here. The quarry is good. Also, like I said, killing this regulator is very big for him. So he should put more value into killing this regulator than, you know, he needs. He can even use like 80 Nora to kill it, and it'll still be worth it just because then the Nora miners, the extractors will go off. But two turns, and this Battle Harden is gone. So next turn, the Battle Harden is gone, and these guys are all not nearly as scary anymore. So he has to watch out. This is when the swing turn can happen again. Um, though this is at 95 health, so this is still huge, even if he loses Battle Harden. Yeah, I'm guessing he'll, like, attack and then Force Bearer to, like, run away with the Regulator. Alright, heal Mass. Though there is the Dark Healing again. Ooh, pull. But we have Vaporize, is the thing. But this is Purging Flames as well. No, no Purging Flames, never mind. 
Oh yeah, he needs to run away with the regulator. That's why he doesn't attack, because he wants to be able to run all the way away. Like up to here, or here. We could see another harpoon, but I doubt it. Because you don't want to lose this anti-Nora gen, right? Also the shatter is fine. Maybe here, I think here is safer. Even though, is it? I'm not even sure. So he's gonna stay in the font with the regulator and then use the force bear to block him off. All right, there's Memento. Four defense on the champion now with tough three. Memento also gives damage to these adaptive champions. There's only two adaptive champions out right now though. Battle him again, dude. Another battle him. That's big. All right, magic damage on the page. All right. Double swap. No, it doesn't. Okay. Yeah, it moves into range of the battle master. Double taps. It doesn't really want to waste this AP though. I would say move up maybe. He has four defense right now with sapping armor. He's quite tanky. Yeah, exactly. He moves forward again. He's going to say, hey, my dilemma is here to start defending, right? To help defend. And we have heal mass three here and heal mass three here. So we have two heal masses. Oh, look at that damage. Though. They just both held, healed for 12. Nice. All right. So they now all lost their HP. So the battle hardened HP, I mean. Back at 50. We do still have the war banner though. I do not know why he doesn't play. I, I really think, I'm not even kidding. I, I think the reason Tiny Dragon doesn't play his war banner, like he has it, is because he wants the competition. I really think that's the reason. He just like, nah. He could, but he just doesn't want to. He's just messing around. I do not know why you would ever not play your war banner. I get the only reason is maybe because of the quarry. Because he's like, oh, there's a whirling quarry with uh, Sizem, so why ever play it? Right, that's that's the only thing I can think of. All right, does he have another harpoon here, or why is he moving forward with this rift spirit? Also, he actually didn't use the force barrier. I thought he was going to. All right, there's a another marid. I have, by the way, this battle group from Shrine Master. So this SP battle group, which I said is probably the best Shadow Peace battle group. I have it up on um, on showcase decks. So if you want to play it, it is there. I mean, you basically see every battle group or everything. So spell wise, what I'm guessing, I can't be positive, but guessing what he plays is one vertical push, one peaks tactics, one distract, obviously avalanche, alacrity, war banner, slaver's whip. And then which is our boon. I play in mine Zealotry and Staff of Souls as well, but I'm not sure if he does. Alright, so get those kills. And now he has the range, is the thing. We only have one range champion here, but it's actually okay against SP if you don't have that much range because you have swap, right? You have double swap. So even if you don't have super long range, you're still doing fine. Oh, the, the strategist at 22 damage. I didn't even see that because of the hunt surge enemy. Look at that, 27 damage taken. Huh. He took 27, 16, 16, and then died. Huh, that's insane. Forgot that he healed for 12 and just died here. Yeah. So he's killing the summons. And like I said, Battle Harden is gone. Battle Drum is up though, kind of soon. I mean, the battle him is up, so. Battle Harden will be up in like two turns.
crazy that uh, there was that one triple kill on that one turn, which was really nice by Shrine Master, but then after that, I don't know. It's just that these extractors are useless. This is 100 Nora kind of down the drain in a bit, in a way. I mean, they did get some extracts out. I think they, got, they both got two off, right? Before the Irregulator came out. Yeah, but we have double heal mass, but the uh, Infernal is here. So we're going to have to see a... Uh, Whoa, okay. Uh, he did that because of the um, Chuck Mangle Totem or T Totem in general. I was thinking what he could do is use the Force Barrier around his Regulator just so that pull can't be used. Because if there's all this stuff here, then they can't be pulled into range of anything. Anyway, I like Staff of Solstice, so I play that as well. Alright, he's going to attack. Deals no damage. I mean, it dealt nine just to all three of them, though. Yeah, does two damage. Two, two, two. The regen just like heals that back, though. The regen and the heal mass just completely, you know, negate when you have Nexus Aura. Then everybody takes damage for a few turns and you just heal mass. And you're like, oh, okay. Anyway, they're all stuck here on the dead magic zone, all kind of just hovering here. The reason they're here is they're grouped up for the Shroud. I don't know why. I was okay with attacking with the one champion because you had the AP to not waste if you did attack. But I don't know why you would attack with like Head Trinker here, you know? Because attacking with the Head Trinker doesn't make sense because now he's at 0 AP when you just wait until next turn to attack. So I'm okay with attacking with him, but not with the other ones as much. I think he should have waited. We could see a really nice Confuse like right here. What was that? Grant evasive on him, okay, on the head drinker. Not a that's a good good play. Also moves the rift spirit in front in case of I don't know what, so they can't get engaged. I guess there's no real chance to engage with though, so it's a bit meh. But we could soon see another swap plus pull play to kill something. Swap pull and then just boom boom. Yeah, the extractor is like, I'm here to be a tank. Because, like, he is right now 1 to 1 Nora ratio. So he's kind of tanky as, like, Nora wise goes. All right, heal mass. But, like I said, we do have this dark favor. So heal mass is a bit awkward. Oh, he's going to. No, he's going to use mass teleport. I thought he was going to heal mass. All right, mass teleport. Forward. He's on the lava, but it's okay. He's probably gonna go for this whirling quarry. Yeah, he can confuse though if he wants, because um, there's no more dead magic zone. All right. We got seven four. He gains. He gains seven plus four. He gains seven plus four. So, eleven and all. There's the Barb Vines. The Ritualist dies here. He played three spells in all now? Alright, so there's a Ritualist dead. You can get the Nora Globe if he wants. He has to kind of go for this Whirling Quarry though, just because of the Shroud. So going for the Whirling Quarry first might be the best play, at least when the Rain Champions. Alright, Blind. Dude, how many spells is he playing? Holy cow. Eighteen damage, eighteen damage. That knockback though. Yeah, the knockback doing a lot. He has seven seconds left. This uh, counterplay might be strong. It depends. He can move forward and use force barrier. To like stop them from moving, but they all have equipment on them now, right? And they're taking damage and they're lumbering. <sighs> they're all equipped, they're uh, ensnared. 
But we do have the extract here. So yeah, I'm guessing strategist is dead, but look at that, three defense. They all have the memento. So and the memento plus, let's see how much health. Who's the highest health here? 63 because of adaptive ally memento. He's at four defense, three defense, three defense. Like they all have the defense of like fucking uh, Tortons. Ooh, there's the battle drum though. That's pretty big. Oh wait, why can't he double? Oh, he didn't get the AP. The head shrinker didn't get the AP because of the blockade. So he can't actually attack. Uh, but he can swap, okay. He has 15 damage. All right. Oh no, escape magic again. He moved over here, that's weird. Dude, double escape magic. That's a hidden spell we saw. All right, kill him the tender, not bad. He's blinded, yeah, I can't do anything. You can get the Norgo if he wants. The Blockade is doing so much work just because he can't gain AP through Battle Drum or through the Vitality. He can attack once with the Inferno or at least Hex. Ooh. Oh, none of them go onto Lava though. I thought he gets some on Lava, but no. All right, there's the hex. Eight seconds left. All right, so he's in the font. He's hexed. He's at 16 damage. And oh, look at this totem doing 22 damage to the regulator. Totem being huge, but he doesn't get either of these normal globes. Also that fascinate just brought all three of these in. And there's the confuse. Confuse. I'm not sure why he did that actually. Like, why did he confuse there? I guess for the heal mass, right? Oh, he didn't get this kill. The bard is alive. Yeah, heal mass. Yeah, exactly. He used the confuse just to get rid of the uh, dark favor. Only one heal mass though. The other one's dead. Fifty health, two defense, or minus two defense. Only five damage, so he can't do much. He can't though. Twenty six damage. Wow, that's a lot. Because minus two, he's doing twenty one, and then the uh, the vulnerability for the kill. So kill the Rift Lord. He wants this Norglobe and this Norglobe, but he can't get them because the Rift Spirit's in the way and stuff. All right, gonna retreat. He attacks once. Now you can get this one if he wants, but it's not amazing as an idea. You can go five and then retreat three. Nah, it's not worth it ever, is it? It's too dangerous. Yeah, exactly, he just retreats. Also, the strategist is down here somewhere, right? It's coming back. All right, Grimlick's Mirror gets him another one. Another Harbinger, as well as, look at that, 71 HP, 20 damage, 2 defense. And most of that really just, look at that, 21 damage. Most of that actually really just comes from the ally. Like, the adaptive theme of KF would be bad if it wasn't for ally. Or, sorry, for the um, fanfare, I mean. So there's the avalanche, but he did not hit the harbinger into lava. He only did knockback damage. He wants to get this kill first for the blockade, right? So kill this champion first for sure. You can double tap, heals him up a bit. Oh, he's confused anyway. Never mind. He's confused anyway, so he can't gain the AP. But the elven bard should be dead, right? Yeah. Regulator might be dead. It's close. He can't use. Yeah, he can't attack with the head shrinker though. He doesn't have swap up again. As well, it's just gone because of confuse. These Norglobes are juicy though. Can you get this kill? No, right? No, he can't. Three retreats. That's okay. 
I'm okay with retreating here, waiting for the distract to go away. He has to wait three turns though. Look at this. Oh, they're all taking the. All right, there's the VP. He wants these Norglobes, but yeah, VP is the kill, right? I believe it's a kill. Was that bullseye? Okay, thirty-five damage. How much is this gonna be? He dealt thirty-five. He was gonna do what, like twenty-five, something like that? Thirty damage because of the vulnerability. So both of these will be dead. So all three of these are gonna be dead this turn. Yeah, all three of these are dead next turn. This turn. Actually, wait, maybe not, because this harbinger can only attack one champion. Yeah, maybe not. Oh, there's that kill. Yeah, you can actually kill these two. You all, <laughs> all three Norglobes, though. Ah, okay. Well, there you go. Uses the uh, <laughs> Gimlik's Bane to kill both of them. And now he can still attack with his Marid now if he wants. To deal, let's see, 20? Something? 19, okay. So he gets all three kills. He got the Norglobes. These two Norglobes are kind of safe for him right maybe the boil infernal can take it but look we have now this champion at 23 23 damage 58 health this champion at 78 health 25 damage and these champions are huge right in their own right like they don't even need the stacking they just have so much value because of their eight speed 13 damage flying you know they just they just can't get killed they run away like they're not they just they're so versatile in a way Ooh, that's true. But he only has one more extractor. And Tiny gets all three of these Norglobes. And we're going to see a mass teleport to get this bottom font. Right? Where does he get the Norglobes? Three, four, five. Move here. I don't know. I think he goes for the kill on the Wardrummer. Move him down. Or is he going for the kill on something else? Is he going up here to kill like these two or something? Yeah, okay, so he's moving top instead of moving bot. I was thinking of moving bot just because he's all alone. But there you go, GG. Yeah, uh, that's game. A few misplays. I think he should have just kept deploying. Um, the regulator did wreck. The avalanche was bad. He had a good turn where he got three kills. But sometimes that just doesn't help against Tiny Dragon, right? Tiny Dragon kept playing just like efficiently somehow. Anyway, GG.